Hello, I'm Eric Dunkavage, the Director of Hematopathology at Washington University in St. Louis. On behalf of my co-authors, including David Spencer and Molly Schroeder, I'm happy to present our abstract entitled ChromaSeq, Whole Genome Sequencing-Based Karyotyping for Hematologic Malignancies. For those of you who are unfamiliar with cytogenetics, it forms the mainstay of risk classification systems in AML and MDS, both myeloid malignancies. Cytogenetics has been around uh, for approximately uh, 40 to 50 years. It was really the first unbiased whole genome uh, technology. Cytogenetics relies on direct visualization of individual chromosomes under a light microscope. So because of that, it's not a very sensitive technology. Cytogenetics also requires the culture of live cells. So this limits its use uh, to fresh blood or bone marrow biopsies. It also requires growth of these cells, which can take uh, several days to weeks. Now, despite being a 40-year-old technology, it has proved very difficult to replace conventional cytogenetics with newer molecular methods. Part of the reason for that is because cytogenetics can detect large structural variants, including chromosomal rearrangements or translocations, as well as copy number alterations. So in this study, we used whole genome sequencing to replace conventional cytogenetics in the clinical laboratory. We used whole genome sequencing to detect copy number alterations, translocations or rearrangements, as well as single nucleotide alterations and uh, insertions and deletions. So the idea here is to use whole genome sequencing as a single rapid comprehensive clinical assay for hematologic malignancies. Well, there are a lot of gene panels on the market for hematologic malignancies. These panels generally only detect small DNA level mutations, such as single nucleotide variants or insertions and deletions. In general, these panels are not capable of detecting structural variants, including translocations and copy number alterations uh, that are detectable by conventional cytogenetics. Now, there are approaches out there that will detect targeted translocations as well as copy number alterations. Approaches tend to be fairly complicated and rely on targeted sequencing, so they're not unbiased methods. Also, because the workflows are so complicated, the labor costs uh, for these methods in a clinical laboratory tend to be very expensive. So in this study, we used a custom whole genome sequencing workflow where DNA was extracted from peripheral blood or bone marrow samples. DNA was then made into libraries using the Illumina Nextera Flex chemistry. This technology allows for library generation in as little as two hours. Libraries were then sequenced to 60x mean targeted depth on an Illumina NovaSeq instrument using S1 or S4 flow cells. Data was then analyzed in the cloud using the Illumina Dragon uh, to achieve uh, very rapid analysis times. The workflow was highly customized to identify recurrent translocations, copy number alterations, and single nucleotide variants. The entire workflow from DNA extraction to report generation took as little as three days. We sequenced a total of 263 total patients, including 146 retrospective samples and 117 prospectively collected samples. Cytogenetic studies were performed on all patients. However, in some situations, they were unsuccessful. Results. The sensitivity for whole genome sequencing for translocation detection was 100% compared to conventional cytogenetics in 40 of 40 cases. The sensitivity of whole genome sequencing to detect clonal copy number alterations was 100% in 91 of 91 cases compared to cytogenetics. A comparison of single nucleotide variant and indel calls compared to high coverage targeted sequencing yielded a sensitivity of 84% and 89% respectively. Whole genome sequencing detected an additional 13 translocations that were cryptic by cytogenetics. These included two inversion 16s, one RUNX1 gene fusion, and 10 rearrangements involving KMT2A, formerly known as MLL. These translocations were validated by FISH, breakpoint PCR, or RNA-seq. Whole genome sequencing detected 21 new copy number alterations in 14 patients. 
12 of which could be confirmed by orthogonal methods. We evaluated the feasibility of using whole genome sequencing for routine clinical testing by prospectively sequencing 117 consecutive patient samples. The median total processing time was 5.1 days, which included two days for library preparation, two days for sequencing, and less than one day for analysis. The shortest times were approximately three days, when clinical laboratory staffing allowed for samples to be sequenced in dedicated runs immediately following library generation. This set of consecutive patients allowed us to estimate the diagnostic yield of whole genome sequencing compared to conventional cytogenetics and targeted sequencing. Among the 68 AML patients, 23 were assigned to the adverse risk group, 15 to intermediate risk, and 20 to APL or favorable risk using established ELN and NCCN guidelines. 10 patients had unsuccessful or inconclusive cytogenetics and could not be assigned to risk group. Whole genome sequencing-based evaluation identified new cytogenetic abnormalities in 19 of these 68 patients, including a T1517 rearrangement in a case with unsuccessful cytogenetics, cryptic or complex rearrangements in six cases, new CNAs that resulted in a complex karyotype call in three cases, and identification of either a normal karyotype or one to two cytogenic abnormalities in cases with inconclusive or unsuccessful cytogenetics. Risk stratification of the non-APL patients using only data from whole genome sequencing and FLT3 ITD testing reclassified 13 of the 68 patients to a different risk group compared to standard testing. A similar yield was observed for the 42 prospective MDS patients in the cohort. We next asked whether whole genome sequencing could be used in place of cytogenetics to predict clinical outcomes using existing genomic risk groups and focused our analysis on the 68 AML patients who did not undergo stem cell transplant. Risk group assignments using conventional testing and whole genome sequencing results agreed for 58 of the 68 patients analyzed. Risk groups defined using both methods displayed the expected associations with overall survival, although whole genome sequencing better separated patients with adverse and favorable risk outcomes, as seen in the Kaplan-Meier curves and forest plots. Similar results were observed in a larger cohort of 97 AML patients treated with either consolidation therapy or stem cell transplant. Finally, we reasoned that whole genome sequencing could have the greatest benefit for patients for whom cytogenetic results were unavailable at diagnosis, which has been reported to occur in up to 20% of AML patients and has been associated with an unfavorable prognosis. We evaluated a cohort of 30 AML patients who were treated with consolidation chemotherapy alone and had unknown cytogenetics at diagnosis. Whole genome sequencing analysis identified risk-defining chromosomal abnormalities in seven patients. Using established NCCN guidelines, we reclassified patients based on adverse or non-adverse risk, which showed a significant correlation with the observed overall survival in the cohort. These findings demonstrate the advantage of more robust DNA-based diagnostics over conventional metaphase cytogenetics. Discussion. In this study, we performed high-coverage 60x whole genome sequencing on a series of 263 AML and MDS patients. We showed that whole genome sequencing had 100% sensitivity to detect clinically relevant findings compared to conventional cytogenetics. In addition, whole genome sequencing identified new genomic information in greater than 25% of patients, resulting in differences in risk assignment in over half of these cases. Prospective sequencing of 117 patients performed in the clinical laboratory demonstrated that results were achievable in as little as three days, and in most cases were faster than conventional cytogenetic testing. Finally, we estimate the cost of clinical whole genome sequencing to be between $1,300 and $2,700, which is within the range of standard multimodality genomic testing used in the evaluation of AML and MDS. While this study focused on myeloid malignancies, many of the advantages of whole genome sequencing described here can be applied directly to patients with other cancer types. 
Whole genome sequencing can be performed on DNA from tissue biopsies of solid tumors, which are often insufficient for standard molecular assays and difficult to culture in cytogenetic studies. On behalf of Molly Schroeder, David Spencer, and our other co-authors, I would like to thank you for inviting us to give this presentation today.